Dr. David Kimbrough, and Dr. Randall Hughes work to unlock the secrets of the inner tidal zone, where the land meets the sea. A couple of years ago, David Kimbrough started investigating a strange and hyper-localized problem. At least, it seemed hyper-localized at the time. It started when they were setting up their big tile experiment south of St. Augustine. Beautiful site, and just, I was always so excited to go work there. The location was great, but some of the oyster reefs were in bad shape. The reefs that weren't looking good, we noticed that the crown conch that you know, benefits our marshes here so much. Their sizes were like, it's like they're football players on steroids, and their numbers were just astronomical. Is 10 and... Hannah did some pretty intensive surveys, really nailing down this sort of oyster mortality problem. Hannah's experiment paired caged oysters that couldn't be eaten with oysters that were exposed to predators. When Hannah did that experiment, I mean, it came out just like we thought. Down south, where the reefs are no longer usable for commercial purposes, the oysters in the cages did just fine. But in two weeks, all the oysters outside the cages were quickly gobbled up. And the only thing that we could find that could do all that gobbling was the crown conch. We think that it has something to do with their reproductive biology and that they really like saltier water. Starting in 2005, data shows that less fresh water was entering the affected areas and that salinity increased. While the increased salt doesn't necessarily harm oysters, it does make a better environment for animals that eat them. Oyster reefs that have been commercially viable for generations could no longer be harvested. A similar situation is playing itself out in Apalachicola Bay, where years of declining freshwater input have led to a crash in that oyster fishery. When David Kimbrough and his crew completed their sampling of the bay, they found that intertidal reefs fringing the bay had the same crown conch issues. The more heavily harvested subtidal reefs were being plagued by another oyster-eating snail, the oyster drill. Apalachicola Bay reefs were more heavily affected than those south of St. Augustine, and it's not entirely clear what role drills or conchs played in their demise. Three and eight. With that in mind, David's crew is repeating some of Hannah's St. Augustine experiments, modified to run under permanent water cover. In the Grass on the Reef is funded by the National Science Foundation.